Welcome to the Trend Talk. We love that you're joining us again. Maravina, are you ready for a show full of art and culture? You know it, Belle. I'm excited because we'll be trend talking to our special guest artist, Margaret Garcia. She's not only made our world more beautiful with her art, soon she'll also be sharing her gorgeous art with the world. We're going to tell you about that in a bit. And speaking of art, we traveled to the city of Riverside, a short ride east of Los Angeles, to visit the site of the soon-to-be Cheech Museum. Actor and comedian Cheech Marin is a major Chicano art collector, and soon his museum will be the place where his collection will be exhibited. It's been his lifelong dream, and soon it will become a reality, and we'll give you a sneak peek of the Cheech. So don't go away, we'll be right back with our trending travel segment. This holiday season, visit our online retail store, LimonadaLA.com, to get unique gifts from shirts, jewelry, tote bags, wall art, masks, and more. We have something for everyone. And now until the end of the year, everything is 10% off. Just use code YEAREND2020. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at LimonadaLA to get updates on our products. Happy holidays, everyone. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. Learn more at wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. The most anticipated cultural events of the decade is the opening of the Cheech Marin Center for Chicano Art, Culture, and Industry to be exhibited at the new Cheech Museum coming in 2022. And we're going to give you a sneak peek at the exquisite Chicano art that will be housed there. Come on, Belle. Okay, <laughs> bye. of the baton, uh -huh. but today it's going to be bashing in the ceremonial pinata, so I, right. there you go. transformation and this gallery is just right next to the Zocalo it is a center of activities it has museum shop it has cafe you have gathering space you know, learning space so these will be all fluid between the art in the gallery and the activity of the people indoor and outdoor and as we go along this path I, I am fully convinced that this museum and and the, uh, the Center for Chicano art and culture it was meant to be and it was meant to be here in Riverside and the Inland Empire it is beyond my wildest dreams of what we could do with this with this building and we hope we can bring honor and glory to a long tradition of historic buildings here in Riverside California Cheech Marin is loved by several generations of fans some know him as the funnier half of the comedy duo Cheech and Chong. Younger fans grew up with him as Cheech, the bus driver. I loved working with him on the CBS cartoon Santo Baguito, and many more have enjoyed his movie, stand-up performances, and golf antics. A few of the Chicano artists to be exhibited at the Cheech are Carlos Almaraz, Margaret Garcia, Gronk, Adán Hernández, and Hatsi Valdez. Most people don't know that indeed, Chich Marín is a fine artist, as a painter specializing in Chicano art. What is well known is his advocacy and support for Chicano artists and culture, including a widely successful art exhibition and tour. 
which is the seed for the Cheech Museum. The six-year touring exhibition, Chicano Visions, American Painters on the Verge, broke attendance records during its wildly successful 12-city tour at major art museums across the U.S. The result? The Riverside Art Museum and the city of Riverside providing a permanent home for this world-renowned collection. Cheech is known to have one of the finest private collections of Chicano art in the United States. And now, this museum will be a worldwide home for Chicano art. Now we can all enjoy Cheech's talent as a fine artist and arts advocate at the Cheech Marin Center for Chicano Art and Culture, affectionately known as the Cheech. The Cheech Museum is scheduled to open in May of 2022. Visit the Cheech Center on Instagram for more information. Don't go away. We'll be right back with our special guest. Este verano, refrescate con la original Bravo Cola Champán. Sabor único, siempre contigo. strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. Learn more at wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Our next guest is a prolific painter, recognized for both her extraordinary portraits and several terrific murals in the greater Los Angeles area. Known internationally, she has exhibited in solo and group shows, and her work is included in several Chicano art collections, such as her piece, Finding Jesus at the Taco Stand, that is in the Cheech Marin collection. Everyone, please help me welcome Margaret Garcia. Thank you so much for joining us, Margaret. Your work is colorful and inspiration and so moving. And I love your piece, F. Emilio and Mom. It was part of the Blanton Museum of Art's Wonder Woman exhibit. So this was highlighting the strength and versatility of women. Who inspired your strength and confidence in your art? That's easy. That's my grandmother, Refugia. We called her Grandma Ruth. Refugia. It was Maria Refugia de Marmolejo, and uh, she was great. She would go to my elementary school and tell them I had a doctor's appointment, and we'd go play. We'd go bet on the horses at the track, <laughs> but she was great. Wow. And uh, what area did you uh, grow up in, Margaret? Uh, I grew up in Boyle Heights. Uh, and my father was born in Boyle Heights. My grandmother was born in El Paso. So we've been here a number of generations already. And apparently I have ancestors who were here during the Alamo, during, during that transition. My great, my great grandmother was Tarumara. My grandfather was Apache Yaqui. So we're not just Mexicanos, we are indigenous to the area. Wow. And you had an exhibit last year, which was called mm -hmm. 2020 Prayers from L.A., which is a virtual exhibit. And it had such an amazing success. And it was during the pandemic that, of course, we all know shut everything down, right. except we know the human spirit that didn't mm -hmm. get shut down. So tell right. us about the exhibit. 
Um, that prayers exhibit was a concept that I put together right after the 2016 election that we had all, uh, the, the, the election had been so contentious amongst us and I wanted to find something that united us, that brought us together. And I wanted to say, well, you know, um, don't tell me what you're against, tell me what you're in favor of. I know we're all against the war, but are we in favor of peace? Mm -hmm. And every morning you get up and there was some horrendous thing with the refugees and climate change and orphans and Romania and Mexico. And it, it, it got to be where you, you didn't even want to open up your mail because you were bombarded with issues. And I said, if I could just do a little piece, and I, I started by doing these little miniatures and they were painted prayers. The idea was that we, we could all bring something to the table and, and have an exhibit. So the first time we did the prayer exhibit, it was at the Muckenthaler. And uh, Natasha St. Satir, who was a student of mine uh, in Chinatown when she was in high school, came back into my life and she fell in love with the concept and she embraced it and she got into doing produ production and producing and doing musical events. She has an incredible voice. And what she did is she started to use that as a way to raise money and she loves Casa O 101 and, uh, she brought it together with the Muckenthaler to do as a fundraiser. And the idea would be to bring to the table those things that you're in favor of, those prayers that you have. You can't do everything. It's impossible. The situation has become untenable. So you have to find a way each day to make a small contribution. And so I did a series of teeny tiny little paintings that represented prayers uh, I did for the Syrian child, for the Bangladeshi baby, the Korean orphans, the Mexican orphans, the, the uh, fighting in, in Africa. So every day I would find something else that I could do a little painting for because you can't be everything to everybody. So you wanna make sure that when you're doing something, it's a contribution that's positive and um, so that was, that was the idea behind the prayer. And um, Nata it's in Natasha's hands. She's the one who went virtual with it. She was up in Alaska and she said, I still need to do this, but she couldn't be physically present. And she had gathered uh, a number of artists from Mexico, from Tijuana, from Standing Rock, um, we had a print series. So there were issues that we all cared about, whether it was protecting the water, protecting um, some of the human rights um, that were going on. And so that was a way for everybody to sort of come together and talk about what they cared about. Now, there were some conservative people that took part in that the first time. But as long as it was something positive that people were concerned with, then we wanted to sort of open that door and have a dialogue because you, you can't have that dialogue if the door is shut. Also in times of trouble, always look to the arts, oh, the release, yes. right? And, and on, the, on the heels of that, let me, let me ask you about um, a very popular quote of yours. Um, and here's the quote. I define Chicano art by creating it. My work is personal and also embraces the cultural common ground of my community and the history of Los Angeles. Now, that personal community responsibility can be daunting. Mm -hmm. So how do you manage this? You know, um, I, I, I met Tamayo early on, and Tamayo said to me that he didn't do political art and he wasn't a pamphleteer and he didn't do slogans. And I, I thought about that, but you know, um, there are so many issues facing our community. I think that the best you can do as an artist is to inform yourself. When you sit down in front of your easel or whatever your medium is, you're not sitting there uh, trying to assemble slogans. I'm not a graphic artist. Some people are very good with political art. 
I'm not necessarily a political artist, but because my existence is political, therefore my art is political because it's part of me. And the very fact that I exist to bring these issues up into the consciousness, whether it is visually through the work itself or the content of the work or how I use my work, those all play in terms of how the art is received by the community and how it is accepted by the community. Mm -hmm. I don't need a barcode on my ass to say uh, I am a Chicana. You know, Mexicanos, that is a nationality. It's not a race. Um, being Chicano has to do with an awareness of the issues that impact your community. And that's where I stand. Um, I don't use the term Latinx, but I think that that's petty to sit there and make issues over labels. Yeah. Because if people want to be part of your community and you're, you're looking to define your community through culture and art. And we do that. Culture isn't just painting. Culture is, is uh, acting, is, is food, is music, is, you know, culture is a lot of things. And when we die, as my husband says, the earth is a repository of our history. When that, they're trying to dig up our bones and dig up our, our work. They're not looking for political statements. They're looking for the art that is left behind that helped define what that civilization, what our community is about. Mm -hmm. It is about civilization. We are part of that. You know, such amazing words of wisdom that you're sharing with us. Thank you so much. And, and one of the things that I am so excited, we're excited about, is that you're one of the few women that will be on exhibit at the anticipated Cheech Museum in Riverside. You know, tell us about nav navigating that as a Chicano artist, as a woman. But now there's another little glitch that we has come up for artists, the, the whole digital age of how your art is sold and how it's represented. Can you give us a little bit about that? Well, wait, where do I start? Um, yeah. I, let me first, I have to give kudos to Cheech who has been stalt worthy, you know, in, in terms of uh, advocating for Chicano artists. There's no one who works harder for the Chicano artists and the cultural community than Cheech. And I am amazed. Um, there is a lack of uh, female presence that I know that he always is working to address. He has a few women in his collection and I'm lucky to have been one of the, the first seven, I think, mm -hmm. um, in, in the opening that he had in uh, Chicano Visions in San Antonio. When that show opened, I think I was one of the seven. I think, um, from just a human standpoint, um, he trusts his instincts. No one has to tell Cheech what it is to be a Chicano because he knows he's a Chicano and he knows where he comes from. And you can see that he embraces that when he looks at the imagery and he can see, oh, that, that sort of embodies the experience and, and the history that I have as a Chicano. He, he is a man. And he responds to the dialogue and the concerns of other men because it's natural. He's a guy. Um, every now and then, you're, it's kind of like the women come out of the kitchen and they say, hey, 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 don't forget. You know? And so sometimes he, he pays attention to that. But I don't, I don't think it's an, uh, him trying to keep women out. I think that the, the dialogue that resonates with him is speaking to his experience as a man. So you have male artists who have, you know, fast cars and women and, you know, uh, guy things in there. And that's, I think that's normal. I don't think it's abnormal, but what he is doing is he has been creating space and he has been creating, creating time with the consciousness and saying, you know, hey, we need, to, we need to embrace women and hear what they have to contribute because our dialogue is different. Women have a tendency to be concerned more with la familia in some ways that is more personal than the way that the men express it. 
Um, it isn't that the men don't express it. It's just that there is a difference in the way that we express it. So sure. I, I think that's the, the big issue. And the fact that he's brought attention to it makes it easier for the rest of us to make a living, to, mm -hmm. to bring attention to our work. We and love you, Gene, for bringing all this artwork to uh, out <laughs> in the forefront. But because yeah. before yes. that, people knew about it, but he really exploded that. And it's so amazing right. to see and discover, even within our community, the artists that are out there in all across the country. Because I knew right. the ones here. I knew your work, Margaret, always. And so, yes, Cheech, you're doing an amazing thing. He, he is. He is. He is. Yeah. He is. It's and really I, I don't know. You know, I just... I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that he's opening up the, the Cheech in Riverside yes. because oh, we yes. have a, a place. I can't imagine dealing with LACMA. You know, the, <laughs> Los Four did the first Chicano exhibit in the 70s. And I know Magoo was, uh, you know, well, Magoo was one of the Los Four. But mm -hmm. what, what, what happened was that the L.A. County, because LACMA is L.A. County, right? Uh, said, hey, you know, they're taking our tax dollars, but we're not represented on the walls of that museum and demanded an exhibit. And that's how it came about. And I know that uh, Cecil Ferguson, who's from the African-American community, ended up taking um, responsibility for some of that curatorship. But, but he wasn't well established as an art historian or anything like that. But the rest of the people at LACMA didn't want to put their hands on it because, you know, they want high art, you know. It's wonderful, as you said, that Cheech yeah. is making the space, the room. For, yeah, because they're breaking yeah. records. That's right. Well, uh, we have truly enjoyed having you on today, Margaret Garcia. Your art is inspiring. And we look forward to seeing you at the Cheech. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Margaret. Thank you for coming and speaking with us. You've been an artist that's been inspiring so many people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more of the Trend Talk. Este verano, refrescate con la original Bravo Cola Champán. Sabor único, siempre contigo. strong we are resilient and we will get through this together but these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care it's normal to feel overwhelmed anxious or afraid but there is hope reach out to someone connect with your friends stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone learn more at wearebroadcasters.com slash hope furnished by the national association of broadcasters and this station Trendsetter shout out goes to self help graphics. In 1970, artist and Franciscan nun Karen Bocalero started producing prints in an East Los Angeles garage with a number of Chicano artists, including Carlos Bueno, Antonio Ibanez, and Frank Hernandez. Who, by the way, is my brother. That's right. <laughs> they decided to work together to promote community arts and the work of local artists, to use art as an instrument of social change in the barrio, and to establish a cultural arts center. It is also the site of our city's first and biggest Day of the Dead celebration. And now we want to thank our guests for joining us today on the Trend Talk. Remember to tune in on Sundays on the LA Local Me TV station for our new episodes. Or to see our award-winning episodes, go to our YouTube channel, IGTV, or catch us on Facebook Watch.
Because you know, if it's trending, we're, we're talking. talking. holiday season, visit our online retail store, LimonadaLA.com, to get unique gifts from shirts, jewelry, tote bags, wall art, masks, and more. We have something for everyone. And now until the end of the year, everything is 10% off. Just use code YEAREND2020. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at LimonadaLA to get updates on our products. Happy holidays, everyone. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. Learn more at wearebroadcasters.com hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.